Radhe Radhe, happy Chaitra Navratri week to everybody. Today is Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. Mummy and I are here to present our recap video for the Bhagavad Gita study session. Radhe Radhe. We'll go ahead and start sharing the screen and run through what we covered today. So the usual quiz for chapter five, covering last week's verses, followed by three verses that we covered today. Chapter five, verse seven and then combined verses eight and nine. Catchphrase for chapter five, verse seven, ubiquitous atma, atma being used with many different meanings, at least four different forms and usages throughout that verse, chapter five, verse seven. So taking us to the text, we see here Sri Krishna, again, describing great qualities of karma yogis and helping us understand that they can then see the supreme soul, the soul of all souls, God, the supreme, in every living being. And yet, as they perform work, work in devotion, they do not get entangled with, as we know from before, the reactions and the bondage from material activities. So again, Atma, we see, has been used for God, for the soul, for the mind, and the intellect. In a short while, Mummy will quickly tell us something about the important Sanskrit words here. But going on, we see that these karma yogis with purified intellect as they do that, there's a simultaneous process of getting detached from the world while performing work for the pleasure of the Lord. So the mind gets attached and purified as it connects to God. And that is also seeing their inner realization and divine knowledge get progressively purer and clearer, just like ghee being clarified. So that is the aspect of karma yogis. In chapter five, verses eight and nine, we saw over here a question being posed that, you know, what is your role? Do you see your role and what is it meant to be? Who is the doer who performs work? So that's the thought question for chapter five, verse eight. And then chapter five, verse nine, two uses of the phrase material moves in the sense of the verb that material things move versus also the move, uh, use of the word move as a noun, material moves or movements in it opposition to spiritual moves or movements. So that's chapter five, verses eight and nine in terms of catchphrases. What we saw here are lots of different action verbs. Helpful hint, we're not expecting all of you to learn and memorize all of these right away, but hopefully Mummy's explanation or the presentation of the roots for some of them or certain subsets of words that are related to common usage or Hindi or in Sanskrit Hopefully that helps you understand or remember a few of them. Like she said, for Pralapan, she related it to Alap. That's just one that I remember listening in class. The point is that Sri Krishna explicitly tells Arjun here that always think, I am not the doer. So a reminder from chapter 3, verses 27 onwards, it is the material energy of God. It is the three modes of material nature. So Prakriti and the three gunas that actually do work. They are known as the doer. And that energy, of course, all comes from God. We get that power from God, and then we can perform tasks and activities. While all that's happening, we continue to distinguish ourselves as the soul and not the body. So that is the main takeaway for chapter five, verses eight and nine. We also mentioned the important phrase, giving up the pride of doership. Chapter two, verse 47, often overlooked aspect of it, Wabhiman, the pride of doership. If we have this sense of doership, it's a stumbling block for our spiritual progress. So we try to give that aspect up. So in essence, we perform work, we do it for, the devo for devotion and for the pleasure of the Lord. And then we accept whatever fruits, as you call it, or whatever outcomes there are, because all that is the divine will of God. Next week and beyond, we'll see what the consequences are of performing work in this manner as a karma yogi. Mummy, over to you, some Sanskrit context and so on. Yes, thank you, Gagan. So in verse number seven, Krishna has given us a um, few words for Atma. Atma means soul. So Atma, I talked about that it is Jivatma, that is our individual soul and uh, Paramatma. Paramatma means supreme soul. So we are a tiny fragment of that supreme soul. And that is the energy powerhouse 
from where we get all the energy to do all the actions. Basically, we have to learn that we remain in inaction in our heart and outwardly we do action. And we have to understand the concept of uh, non-doership, that we are not the doer. It is only with God's grace things do happen in our lives. We on our own cannot do. We are basically the instruments of God through whom he gets the work done. It's God only who is the doer for all the karma yogis. They understand that we don't have to work for our, the fruits of our action. And whatever we do, we do for the pleasure of God. Now, three words I want you to take notice of is Vishud Atma. That means one with a purified intellect, Vishud Atma. So here, Krishna has used this Atma word for intellect. Another one, uh, Vijitatma. Vijitatma means who has conquered the mind. And Jitendriya. Jitendriya means one who has controlled the senses. So now basically, if you understand, it is the same word which is otherwise not used for mind or intellect. But once mind and intellect are purified, they are considered in the category of Atma. Once you have conquered your mind, once you have controlled your senses, and once you have purified your intellect. So that is why Krishna has used the words Vishuddha Atma, Vijit Atma, and Jitendriya. So basically, with all this purification, we have to understand that we are not the body, we are the soul. Outwardly, we are, in act, outwardly we are doing action. Internally, we remain in inaction. And while doing any of our day-to-day -day jobs also, we keep on remembering that God is sitting right here in our heart. And we keep on reminding ourselves and we keep on doing everything for the pleasure of God. And let's learn to see whatever is happening through us, around us, that is like a picture which is happening. And this soul is just like a Sakshi, just watching the whole movie being played because whatever happens, it happens with God's grace. I hope that helps to understand. Yep, so that's the summary for chapter five, verses seven, eight, and nine covered today. We'll, of course, meet next week again, same time, Sunday, 10th April, 2022. In the meantime, in some time, you'll get the document with um, you know, a, a meditation that connects with events for next week. Navratri celebrations continue. And as we mentioned as well, please do hopefully sign up and support in the virtual walk fundraising initiative and also help to spread the word for our upcoming new series of in-person Bhagavad Gita recitation classes, some study as well at the Radha Krishna temple. So all that information will be in the document that's sent out. We hope to look, uh, look forward to next week and we'll meet you in class. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you.